Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of my 500% threat scaling Randy Random Run. I guess it's going to be a true mini-series. Maybe today is already the episode where everybody, everything will fall apart, but I hope I will at least withstand the first few rounds. My goal is episode 5 and my name is Iken and I welcome you to this wonderful new series. And if you like RimWorld content in general, take a look on my channel. You'll find some other nice strategy-based gaming content there too. Leave a subscription if you find something you like and you won't miss anything in the future and make an old content creator like me very, very happy. But that's besides the point. So today I'm going to build everything out of stone because, uh, you know, Randy can really ruin your day, but Randy can also really ruin your day. Long story short, wood is never a good idea. And when you're playing with a Randy 500% threat scaled random, no. I don't want to go down, down that road. Maybe he'll send people with frag grenades after me. I don't know what that scaling really means. Um, right now, I'm just assuming that it's just uh, going to be a strong increase in the numbers, but who knows? What's what it really is? Maybe, maybe there's going to be somebody in power armor. Could also be possible. That would be really terrible. All right, but let's check out what's happening. So I was very, very happy to read all those nice comments, and uh, I know there's uh, still some room to uh, make the game still harder. But I wanted to explore what 500% threat rating actually means because right now I'm just uh, waiting to. Waiting until the bomb drops. I mean, this is going to be crazy. That's the only thing I'm sure about. And so I was thinking, let's chop down some trees and put up some good old traps. You know, if if I can't kill them with guns because there are too many, I have to use the terrain to my advantage. And I'm pretty sure these victories, they won't be coming for free. So let's fight for it. Let's see how that's, that'll work out. Mm, Power-wise, what am I going to do about that? I don't feel like I have any time. Lacey is just a, a pure killing machine. I mean, I gave her some art project now. The shop kid grown into an assassin is uh, not really able to do anything else. I mean, we do have nudged the warg, but um, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to train Lacey, animals one, when I have this crazy guy, mute janitor, body purist, gourmand, or, I don't know, he's a weird guy, but I guess animals love him, for whatever reason that is, animals, that's another really uh, important thing that I was thinking about, um, you know, animals are quite nice to uh, defend your people, but if they are not able to get released, their use is rather low. Like, look at that. A alpaca at least has a intermediate train ability, so I can weaponize them. Compared to the um, muffalo, which is uh, only simple train ability, with the muffalo I could train them to guard my people, but um, not to attack. And attacking is quite good. It's really good when when your animals can attack enemies because I, I think I'm going to get outnumbered in a in a really really uh, short time and a good way to deal with that is just to have animals to send into that and there is the first manhunter pack let's see man hunting horses so looks like well they're sending two after me manageable <clears throat> don't take horses lightly they're uh, quite dangerous in terms of damage but well you know could have been worse could have been worse but that's usually the uh, the that one raid where you only get one enemy against you so that's uh, really quite uh, frightening so I'm going to order Lacey away from that. I mean, she's 
so good with the melee combat. I guess she could kill that horse just with a revolver alone, but there's Nudge. He can tank for us. He likes to do that, I bet. Okay, so luckily the base is set up completely and luckily these uh, man-hunting horses have been downed quite quickly. So let's uh, see if I can salvage some meat out of that. That would be a good thing. I mean, getting leather and meat out of that I think I'm going to craft some sandbags out of that leather. Usually I'm not a big fan of that stuff, but with the situation as it is, I want to have some some options. Ooh, light leather. Yeah, that's a good drain for a bad. So, how to do that? My goal will be to have some traps to funnel my enemies around there, but my, my resources are rather low. So where to put down those sandbags? I think here. Just five of them. And the traps will be like a few here. I mean, I don't want to overdo it because uh, they're not that insanely good. But it's way better than having nothing nothing at all. Like... I, I rather prefer a, a weaker strategy compared to no strategy at all. That's the, the point here. Because uh, this situation is uh, overall just waiting to reach a boiling point where I'll just die, I guess. <laughs> so, this is a cold biome. I remember now. So, let's uh, make some parkas there three of them please is somebody assigned yes okay so let's turn up the speed and just hope everything will go fine i'm going to keep lacy busy on uh, art projects out of this simple reason that it sells you know it just simply sells, and that's a very good reason to keep the art in your colony uh, working. I mean, I don't have any trade partners I could send caravans to, but I hope that caravans will come, come past this place. So, the basic idea is to have some sculptures to sell off to spend some more money into useful things. So your wooden spike trap is a one one shot or a a one time use of forty melee damage with a rather high armor penetration. So that's a really nice thing about these spike traps. The armor penetration is that high that they're even going to have some stopping power towards heavy armored things. I like that, and they're quite uh, cheap, especially when you're tempered forest, like. Uh, some people found that a little bit sad, but uh, or, or much more one common day, but it was random, I'm, I'm sorry, but I would have preferred something uh, more spicy too, but that was Randy's choice, it wasn't me. <laughs> Feels uh, quite funny to have this uh, mashup, and I really just hope so much that I'm going to get somebody useful here um, into the colony. The Solitary Praetor. So, yeah, I think at my point, I, I definitely want to have the Yeoman um, rank up here. Is anybody good with social things? <laughs> oh, what kind of nobles you are. Social zero is the best we can, ha we can ha take. Those two people, they are incapable. Totally random people. I love it. All right, so let's uh, <clears throat> give that... Uh, one to Valentina and let the uh, man hunting monkey roll in. All right, not taking that one too serious, but I'm going to send Lacey here. I mean, this uh, woman is only good for two things making sculptures and oh, <laughs> killing things. Man, it got me all excited. And these two visitors here just. Uh, Spoil all the fun. Oh, okay. 
I mean, with Lacey, I have a a person that's just uh, so so perfectly uh, fit for for combat. I don't have that that often. So there we go. And Valentina is going to get some Psychast. Let's just hope it's going to be something good. And where did it drop again? Oh. It's always the same. Just uh, don't know where that stuff lands. Well, is it already in the warehouse? Is it here? No. So, no, this is a new quest. I see. We don't get that uh, for free anymore. Version 1.2, my friends. So, is ready to grant blah, bestowing some ceremony. Bestower will arrive by shuttle and perform the ceremony. We'll only give a title if any throne room requirements are, are satisfied. Can't betray the bestower. Um, as far as I remember, I can just uh, do that. Because... Uh, I mean, I don't have any requirements for Valentina here, so... Hey, we got a sculpture. Those Imperial guys are marching in. Oh boy. If you can't afford that to, uh, or, I mean... Select Valentina and right-click the Bestower. Alright, there we go. Bestow me! Nice. All right, so uh, burden, cool thing. And uh, can you guys now uh, please go away? Yeah, they go away. All right, that's a really cool kind of immersion thing here. Nice. So let's go back to one of my favorite uh, categories, Rimworld Art, shot for Valentina. This piece bears a portrayal of a network of red lights bracketed between a tributary and a cave. Nine fortune tellers watch from below. The scene takes place in the middle of a town. The work has a neoclassical feeling and a well-balanced structure. This representation relates to Valentina's encampment illuminated by the light of an aurora. Is it only me or does this sound like the work of, it, of somebody who, who should have a passion for art? Wow. The room world is cruel. I guess Lacey lost all her uh, talent for art when she went for that assassin training. Sad story. Um, take your sculpture as a uh, or wrong person. Take your sculpture as a remedy for the pain. There we go. Maybe should have sold it, but uh, some kind of beauty is always quite good, and your people will just. Uh, watch that stuff also in other people's bedrooms. It's a little bit weird, but your colonists like to watch it, to look at art, and they're going to do this no matter where it stands. It's a recreational thing, and uh, it makes people happy. And with a beauty rating of 100, it's quite okay. But it's also having a rather low market value, like 230 bucks, that's uh, really not much. But maybe it'll uh, prevent one or two mental breakdowns, who knows. Alright, so more granite blocks. I don't have any granite blocks in my uh, building plans, so I could do one more uh, sculpture here. So, uh, there's finally the limestone getting hauled. Oh, such a long way, and I don't have any... Uh, thing to train the warg with so I think one good way to to get something to train the warg with is just to micromanage Lacey a little bit and uh, get us some beefy and meaty um, muffalo man I was walking through the Sun today a lot and we had a uh, 35 degrees Celsius and it's amazing how uh, how warm Germany can be, but well, uh, it was no nice feeling. 
wasn't a nice feeling. And I still feel a little bit uh, tired, but I had to play this today. I, I had to, so uh, I didn't want to wait another, <laughs> another day with that. So here we are. Okay, it's all a little bit tame still, so I'm, I don't want to mutter about that, but I'm more like uh, scared, very scared. Um, talking about scared, I think I'm going to murder more of those uh, muffalos. Because uh, if Lacey's only real quality is killing things, I should be killing things with her. It's like uh, I'm having her. I'm having my own uh, one-man army colonist. Maybe I, I was looking at it the wrong way the whole time. She's just uh, that kind of uh, um, unit that you can control and uh, win the game with on your own without having automated combat. Maybe that was Randy's idea behind that. Okay. So, Lacey has also some um, hunt assignment. That's quite good because Lacey can't haul. But that's a funny thing. When they hunt, they haul all the things back home as long as it's still wriggling. They don't haul that, that hunting things back home though. So basically, if your hunter is incapable of hauling and the animal is only downed, he's going to finish it and, back it and carry it home. If it's dead, he's going to let it lie there and leave it for the haulers. That's quite comical. So, oh, the rice is getting done. Nice. I'm stockpiling larger amounts of meat now because I want to uh, get the uh, training of Nudge to a new level here. Because it's going to be very, very uh, good for us to have the Warg trained for combat. And, yeah. I can't tame the alpacas with uh, with meat though. I could try the cougars, but I wanted to, I want to wait until the work is really well trained, and then he's going to accompany his master while the tra taming process of uh, dangerous anim anim animals. It's a quite good thing if you want to go for some beastmaster colonist, and you want to have some really cool things like grizzly bears and cougars and such. Allocate some stupid things like alpacas and such and uh, Get that marker into this where the animals follow their master when he's doing field work And then you go to tame away on that grizzly bear if the grizzly turns into revenge Well, sadly you have to down it or accidentally kill it But those alpacas will tank for you for the time being and you can get your handler into safety if the animal gets just downed, you can uh, rescue it, and uh, sometimes they join out of that too. Or the joining attempt at least is easier afterwards. So just some theory craft about animals. <laughs> so, let's see what happens here next. Um, we have a rotting stallion in here that's disgusting. So I forgot to uh, forbid rotten corpses, obviously. So never uh, allow rotten things in your freezer. That's uh, just not cool. So I'm going to designate this little pit here for uh, rotten animal corpses. So I'm not allowing any fresh, it's just for the, the rotten animal corpses. Boom. So you get that rid out of your freezer. So just disgusting. It's disgusting enough that we're having no flooring in the kitchen and uh, oh man, there are so many glaring um, problems in this uh, place. So let's, uh, let's try to get rid of a few of those as quick as possible because I, I'm just afraid that we won't be having too much time until calamity strikes. So I'm going to install some traps on some more uh, funky locations because I made the experience that it's quite cool to have traps in your whole base um, if you don't need them for a long time there's going to be the day when your base is going to get invaded by drop pod raiders and uh, if the rate is severe enough you're going to be grateful for those 
traps inside your base because you can do a, a lot of nice shenanigans with traps in your base. There we go. So I'm going to relocate the uh, stove into this little room here um, where I'm going to put down some flooring. Just a small room making sure that I'm going to set up some some sort of high, high standard of hygiene because this is just dirty and this is increases the risk of uh, food poisoning by a lot. So today we just uh, faced rather harmless uh, threats, but I mean, also I gotta always uh, keep in mind it's Randy, so we really don't know what happens here. Next, so a poor one, Pumpkin. So she made art about Martin giving up in despair because he has lost his shoe. Finally giving up under stress as a last step, he seems to have lost a shoe. <laughs> yeah, we're going to sell the pumpkin. That's uh, one of the perfect things to to sell. I'm not going to uh, offend any uh, Martin with uh, that piece of art. I mean, I guess Lacey just a, had a, a lucky strike with the first try. Beginner's luck, but now goes the long way. She has to learn what it means to be an artist for, for real. So let's, uh, let's help her with that. I like the idea of uh, some, some professional killer and turning into some repentant person like her. It's uh, a nice narrative. So I have to think about which animals I can take that are able to um, get handled by somebody with just animals one. Because uh, if you're that low on animals, a skill trainer would be the best choice. Because there are not too many animals. Wow, Lacey, what's wrong with you? You ought to be a killing machine. So, 33% shooting chance. There we go. That's just the kind of stuff I want to see. So, we triggered the trap. Hmm. Long story short, um, I don't have a clue how to train Lacey's uh, animal skill. I mean, well, that's not entirely true. I think uh, shearing alpacas and such would sound like a solid... Um, tour to train that so I'm going to uh, change priorities here Martin wasn't a top priority handler good lord no wonder we had no taming attempts on those alpacas I thought I had that un under uh, better control oh man so Lacey can tame away on these things nice awesome I didn't expect that one to be that easy okay cool so we got some alpacas to work with um going to wait until they're trained somewhat i mean a work and two alpacas are not really a a fighting force but let's check out the dps of the alpaca Ooh, that's bad <laughs> that's really bad it's uh it's more of a tank than a damage dealer that's for sure we uh, compare those numbers to uh, to a big old grizzly bear. Um, that's uh, 18.6. So the alpaca does uh, kind of like half the damage of a bear. Okay, I mean it's a bear. Okay. Don't get me wrong here. Oh, boomalopes. Thanks, Randy. So we're going to weaponize those boomalopes. Boomalopes are great. I love boomalopes. Maybe you sh you will do it soon too. Um, Boomalops have uh, intermediate trainability, that means you can weaponize them, so we're just going to tame them and uh, have some some more radical solutions for those raider problems. Me happy now. Thanks, Randy. So, sometimes Randy also gives you um, problems to solve other problems. That's great. Alright. Yay! Go, Martin! The only thing here is, uh... Nah, I don't have a problem. The, uh... Well, in the winter season, I have a trouble to, uh... Train them somehow. 
So uh, maybe let's do the following. I want to do kibble as much as possible because uh, kibble is a really nice stuff. It goes um, with plants and meat. And since my uh, plant fiber will be always very, very limited, um, going to be okay with just transforming all the meat with that the the spare amount of plant fiber into to kibble because uh, kibble is something you can just use to uh, train animals with and uh, Randy does love the mad muffalos today he's a muffalo whisperer or no not only a muffalo no, that's all the time. he's an animal whisperer the sun has baked me a little bit too much today definitely noticed that there we go so those traps are getting used uh, by situations there they were not meant for but well i assume it's okay so let's uh go nudge rawr i love that it's so cool i am really really grateful that these guys got a warg randomly as starting companion that's, as a matter of fact, quite lucky. <laughs> so. That's going to be at least some uh, animal training material. We're going to transmute all the berries alongside with the leftover meat into kibble due to that too. I guess, but well, it's not bad at all. Seriously, not bad at all. So, um, while I appreciate your fervor, Martin, I want to re um, rebuild those traps. I, I mean. There, that's the downside of traps. You can't really uh, save them for certain situations. So the mad animals were certainly not the targets I had them put up for, but you know, well, I don't mind. It made the combat safer. So uh, okay, three Arctic wolves at that point of the game. The heat is uh, turning up. Um, let's uh, show you guys why. The Arctic Wolf is a lean, mean killing machine. So it's not really tremendously deadly. But five cells per, se per second means we have to react now. Those things will be quick with us, on us. The only good thing here is the base damage is not that insanely high. The attack speed is also not insanely high. So it's okay could be very it could be much worse so or friend nudge here is a much more fierce combatant so all right let's uh brace ourselves but i think at this point i'm going to be uh oh boy um martin is so screwed Ah, there's the drama for today. So, Martin can't outrun these things, but he can kite for a little bit longer um, to make sure that Nudge can make his way to his master. So, let's uh, check out where Nudge is going. All right. Nudge is already closing in, but Martin is uh, pretty close to getting uh, tackled down by these guys. There's a high chance that I lose Martin while while uh, the situation, honestly. So uh, there we go. Now he's screwed. They're uh, having this uh, nasty behavior of ganging up on some target and uh, just uh, dragging him down, and so many. Bleeding wounds in a row are just uh, terrible. 
So I'm going to focus the attacks on the thing that's attacking Valentina. I just hope that Nudge is going to be able to uh, stand his ground in his own. So uh, there's uh, Lacey now on her own. Um, sadly, that stupid warg is now... Um, wait a sec. We're going to master that. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, Nudge. We need your... <laughs> Stupid warg. I mean, seriously? Is that how it'll end? I just need to uh, get closer to these traps and uh, they're going to help a lot. Look at Lacey, though. She already dodged two of those blows and... Uh, let's... Uh, let's check it out. So <laughs> Martin and Valentina are dead. <laughs> dead for sure. Because uh, Lacey has no chance of... Uh, doing anything for them. I mean, she's uh, incapable of everything. <laughs> so, you see here, three arctic wolves are just uh, a pretty terrible threat. And in hindsight, I think the proper solution would have been to... Uh, to just accept that um, Martin is down and uh, save Valentina, but that, I keep making that mistake time and time again. It's not the first time that I uh, I find myself doing that mistake. It's just uh, it's just amazing. So we're now going to play uh, this episode three will be Lacey Wild Woman mode because she has now she's unable to butcher. You see. She can't kill those animals, but she's going to consume them raw. And that's, that's enough for one episode, guys. I'm going to leave this uh, with the cliffhanger. So episode three, most likely the last one. Depends if we're getting a, in a man in black or not. But it's going to be Blasey's uh, spotlight. So having a tremendous blast, I... <laughs> I feel a little bit sad. This, is, this feels so cheesy to lose them like that, but... It's not over yet. It's over when it's over. So Lacey is still around. And thanks for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed this ride as much as I did. I'm very, very eager to uh, to experience Lacey's last few days on the Rim World. Maybe, but maybe it's going to be all different. Who knows? Anyways, my friends, leave a comment down below. What do you think will going to happen? And until then, have a wonderful time and goodbye.